Well, we saw that in category one, a single nucleophilic atom attacks once. And that's really the end of the story. This is going to be a category one attack, and we uh, we may uh, well we'll see how much time I have to spend on this. This is actually a reaction that we saw last term, um, so let's just review this because this is still going to be crucial this term. So let's try to actually go through the, the correct mechanism for this reaction. You were using a lot of the techniques we talked about last term, so that's good that you uh, remembered it. That's one advantage of uh, taking the next semester uh, in the summer. You don't yeah, have to much time I realized that the first day. Like... Yeah, that is good. So, uh, so you're using a lot of techniques here that most people don't use, so that's good. So what are the techniques you used? One thing you did is you rewrote this as an ionic bond, so that was excellent. And you remember that the way to do that is first erase the covalent bond so that you don't accidentally add carbons, and then you put in this, uh, uh, the charges. And then you remember that the Grignard is a good nucleophile. Why is it reasonable for this carbon to be a nucleophile? Because it's minus. That's right. And we already said it's reasonable for this to be an electrophile because of the delta positive. Also, you remember the technique of numbering, which really makes it easier to see who's connected to whom. Uh, you got the exact right product here. Um, if necessary, you can remember these carbons too, but it didn't seem necessary for you here. One thing that we will try to get into the habit of doing, though, is asterisking the carbonyl carbon and oxygen. And that would make it even clearer that you're connecting the correct carbons. You're connecting the number one carbon and the asterisk carbon. And then you saw that the purpose of the hydronium in the next step was to give a proton to this oxygen. So we ended up here. All right, so we won't have to spend too much time on that because you uh, remember that well from last term. So that was an important reaction last term, and it's still going to be crucial this term. Um, and uh, one, one thing I would mention is that for me, it's a little bit better maybe to put the nucleophile up here to show that it's displacing the pi bond, but, but uh, that's just a technicality. Uh, so you got that uh, correct. What type of functional group did we start with here? What type of functional group is this? Uh, carbonyl. But we've seen there's a lot of different types oh, of carbonyls. That's, ketone. that's right, so that's the most useful way to describe it, a ketone. And what, what's our name for this type of functional group? Grignard. Yeah, that's right, a Grignard. And what type of functional group did we produce here? Alcohol. We saw last term that a Grignard plus a ketone gives you an alcohol. And you're right, it's tertiary. Um, so, the, so the other thing is, when would you use this reaction for a synthesis if you want to make an alcohol with more carbons? So this is still a reaction that's going to be really crucial on synthesis problems. Um, in fact, you're almost sure to see this on the next test. Um, even though this was a last term reaction. If you need to make an alcohol with more carbons than the starting material had, a great way to do that is a Grignard plus an aldehyde or a ketone. Okay, by the way, um, this is not a reversible reaction. So this is not really a hidden carbonyl because it can't be turned back into a carbonyl. So maybe there's not as much reason to keep the asterisk here because it's not going to turn back into a carbonyl. All right. All right, 
right, so here's a handout for aldehydes and ketones, nucleophilic attack on aldehydes and ketones. Here's the four categories we were talking about. A single nucleophilic atom attack is category one. Two separate nucleophilic atoms attack is category two. A single nucleophilic atom attacks twice is category three. Category four is here, although we won't talk about that today. I don't think you guys have covered that yet. Okay. Um, so let's see here. So we're on page one of the aldehydes and ketones handout. We just reviewed category one. Now, um, to save time, we're not going to go through all the nucleophiles that can attack here, because I think yeah. we're pretty comfortable with this. But you should keep in mind, we didn't have to use a grignard here. We could have used lithium aluminum hydride, or sodium borohydride, or an alkyl lithium. Also, um, those are all re uh, reactions from last term. The one reaction you didn't see last term is that you could also use a water with either an acid or base catalyst. That actually is uh, fairly likely to come up on the test. Um, if we had time, we would go over that, but uh, that's not our top priority, so we won't go over that right now. Alcohol and a base catalyst, that may or may not come up in your course, uh, but uh, water with acid base catalyst, you should see if that's in your, uh, your lecture notes. Yeah. But anyway, here's the basic reaction. We started with an aldehyde or a ketone. The nucleophile attacked the carbonyl carbon, breaking the pi bond, and we got an alcohol because we attacked with an H minus. Okay. <laughs> By the way, if you attack with water or an alcohol, that would be a reversible reaction. And that's what they're mentioning down here. Um, if you uh, form these products, that's reversible. Uh, but uh, that's probably not the, the best use of our time to go over right now. Yeah. So if that makes sense, we can go over category two? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so it's good that uh, you remember that reaction so well, because that's still going to be important. So let's go on to some new stuff like category two.